Hi guys, it's me, Bren B, Bookishly B. Welcome back, or welcome to my channel, if you're new here. I am so excited to be making this video today. I did a video a little bit similar to it, uh, like a couple months ago, to be honest. It's been over a few months, so I've got that in another video. This is basically taking the seven light of my lives and the seven members of BTS and recommending books based on like personality traits that I see in them. This is going to be purely my interpretation of the BTS members and what I see from videos and their music and the way they interact with each other and everything like that. Like, you might have a very different perception of the BTS members. Please don't come for me. <laughs> like everybody has different like ideas of how they see the members and different ideas of how they interpret books. So and this is just what I'm seeing from my perspective. So this video is basically just in celebration of my bias. I turn into a file much every time I talk about him, so I'm not gonna go too into that, but it's Jin's birthday. Today, the day I upload this video in Korea, it is our Worldwide Handsome's birthday. I just am so excited to be doing this with a lovely group of people kind of in honor of his birthday today talking about books and seven of our favorite men boys in the whole world. So I'm just going to jump right in. I'm going to tell you if you don't know a ton about BTS a little bit about the members like personality and then a book that I think fits that well like a standout trait that I see in them. So let's just jump right in and get started. The first one is our fearless leader RM or Kim Namjoon who is a another one of my biases because I'm double biased but we're just gonna <laughs> not talk about that right now. RM is the leader. He is the one who often acts as the translator for the group. He really kind of helps them work through conflict do all that kind of stuff. He is a pivotal member of the group in keeping them together and happy and that they work out those conflicts and just is a really good leader for the group <laughs> essentially. So the book that I see kind of this playing out the most in is Far From the Tree by Robin Bentley. This is a book essentially about a young girl who just gave birth and put the baby up for adoption. She's a teenager and she's also adopted herself and she goes on this journey to find her birth siblings in her birth family and specifically her birth mom. And it kind of follows her and that family's relationship of how they build that, how they grow, how they decide to stay together and how they grow through those really tough times and trying to figure out who they are again with this new information about themselves. There are these people in their lives that impact them greatly. And I think that this fits Namjoon for a lot of reasons, but I think mostly in the fact that it's about relationships in this book and about how you keep them and how you hold on to them and what you have to do to like keep those up. And I think that this kind of fits RM's like leader, making them all come together by just perfectly. The next one, of course, is Jin, the <laughs> light of my life. He is the funniest. He's the oldest member of the group so he takes care of the members a lot. He spends a lot of time taking care of them, making them laugh, making them feel comfortable. Also like making jokes about himself and just making people laugh and just being a light of people's lives. So I had a really hard time honestly thinking of a book that fit all of who I think Jen is and make that work especially for his birthday. But the one book I'm gonna mention is gonna seem a little weird at first but stick with me here and that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong. And so you're probably thinking romance, it's her bias, that's weird. We're gonna back that up and I am just gonna say that Michael for me fits a lot of who Jen like puts his personality out as. Michael is the love interest in The Kiss Quotient and The Kiss Quotient is basically about a girl who has autism and hires a male escort to teach her how to be in a relationship and like be a fake boyfriend. So Michael is that fake boyfriend who is incredibly attractive but also cares so deeply for his family and will do basically anything for them and gives up like his dreams. I think and in how intensely Michael cares about wanting to be the best puts forth so much of an effort that he's known as being really great at what he does in terms of a lot of different things but just like just cares so deeply about his family and just wants to take care of them especially his mom I think it just fits with how Jen just wants to take care of people um, and make people happy and that's kind of why I think those fit so well together and it should be so long <laughs> to kind of figure out how to talk about that since I think it's a little weird to talk about a romance in that but you know there you go the next one is sugar sugar is just <laughs> kind of the definition of Slytherin. He is very caring, but he, especially to the members, but doesn't want to be, like, want to be, like, overt about that. Is just very, like, stoic. Is very, like, bit, like, 
to the point, very dedicated to his craft, just very just knowledgeable about music and producing and just so incredibly talented. One of the first books that I thought of, I actually have here about that was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And you kind of and kind of had to stay with me here on this one as well. This is a book basically about music producing and kind of what it takes to do that and to write music and to be a part of a group. And I think so much of what I think of Sugar is that of like music producing, spending hours in the studio, doing so many amazing things with music. And I think that fits so well with Daisy Jones and the Six. And like I said, Sugar is a Slytherin through and through. And I will fight anyone who thinks that the characters, almost all the characters in this story are Slytherins. I just think this fits really well with the amount of work Sugar puts in, I think is very similar to the songwriting process that we hear about in Daisy Jones and the Six. I, I just think this fits really well. I don't think that um, Sugar goes through the same experiences that are in this book but I think that the the idea of this um, fits really well with how dedicated Shuga is to music and to producing and to being a part of this group in that way. And I think that a lot of the turmoil that he feels, he talks a lot about his mental health and not... <sighs> Obviously not in terms of drugs and things like that that were talked about in Daisy Jones and the Six, but a lot of that doing whatever it takes and working to the bone to get there um, definitely fits with who I think Sugar is and who I see in him in all of the media and things like that that we see him in. The next one, the next member is J-Hope Hobie. Um, the absolute sunshine of a human being. If you've ever seen BTS, you know who J-Hope is. He's the one that's always smiling, just always being a total and absolute goofball, but is also very dedicated to dance and very dedicated to being the best in that, re that way. But every time I think of J-Hope Hobi, I just think of the fact that he's an absolute sunshine ray of a human being. He, like another member that I'll talk about in a minute, is just like the definition of a Hufflepuff to me. Like he's so happy, he's so loyal, and he just wants to make people smile, um, kind of in the same way that Jen does. But for me, what I thought about was a book, like what immediately came to mind was a book that I find so much joy in, and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. Again, a super kind of off-the-wall choice, but this book brings me so much joy. There, it, it just feels right to read it for me. This book is about Morgan Crow, but the joy and all of the things I felt when reading this book are things that I feel when I think of Hobie, so I couldn't help but mention this for him. Again, a super off-the-wall pick, but one that I just love, and I love Hobie's joy. I love the joy that this book gives me, so I thought that they were perfect matches for me. The next one is... Jimin. Jimin is really hard for me to describe because he's one that I, like a member that I just never, like personality wise, really totally understood. Outside the fact that you can tell that boy is a Slytherin through and through. He is so caring and so funny, but just so, just so dedicated and so willing to do whatever it takes and just perfect in what he does and beats himself up for not doing well. Just a very Slytherin person in like all of the good ways. And if you watch him in interviews and you watch him with other members and you watch him in performances, one thing that always stands out to me is Carton from The Crow Prince. Um, there's actually a, an artist drew a drawing as Jimin as Carton and I know Mel from Mel to the Any talks about that all the time, and that's like her favorite thing. And I cannot get out of my head that Jimin is Carton in any way, shape, or form. And I don't really know why or how to like describe that to other people besides the fact that he's just intense about his emotions and his feelings just in the same way that Carton is. If you've ever seen Blood, Sweat, and Tears, the music video, there is a part where Jimin flicks his jacket over his shoulder, which this is going to seem insane to people who aren't in BTS, but there's this moment where he does that, and it is so cartoon to me that I can't pick anything else for this besides the core prince for him. Um, I really shouldn't need to tell you what the core prince is about. It is about our main character Jude, whose parents are killed in the first scene, um, and she is kidnapped by her mom's original husband, who is a fae, and she then grows up as one of his children in the fairy world and all she wants to do is be a fairy and there is the prince of fairy Carden who is just cruel to her in a lot of ways but they the story kind of follows from there as they kind of 
battle with like political wit and things like that. A Cardin and the best things about Cardin are driven. The worst things about Cardin are not driven, <laughs> most likely in any way, shape, or form. The energy that they kind of put forward, especially in terms of what makes Cardin soft, uh, for whatever reason, like makes this pairing perfect. And if you have read this and you watch any interviews from Jimin and you watch him interact with people, I think you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The next member is B. B is another member I have a really hard time kind of describing, besides the fact that he is the definition of a Hufflepuff in so many ways, <laughs> so much so that I had a really hard time kind of nailing down a book that fit his personality, because his personality is being a Hufflepuff. He loves people, he loves art, he loves kids, loves his family, is so loyal to the other members, is just so dedicated to them, so dedicated to what they're doing, but just so loyal and intelligent in so many different ways, and talented and crazy talented. I had, I had such a hard time picking a book that kind of fit all of that because it's such a like a complex person. A lot of these boys are, but his personality is Pufflepuff, and I find it felt really hard to kind of narrow down. But one character that stood out to me that reminded me a lot of that is Adam from Love to A to Z by S.K. Ali. This is a book essentially about two characters who are kind of thrust together in this world in two very complicated times of their lives. It is an amazing book, a really hard book to read in a lot of ways, but just something that ends with so much joy and so much love. But Adam in this is is sick, um, has been diagnosed with the same disease that killed his mom, and is trying to figure out a way to talk to his family about that, but not wanting to share that, not wanting to share that he's sick and is scared. It's trying to figure out how to be in that relationship with people, and also like builds and creates these beautiful like scenarios and just is a beautiful artist. And V loves art, and I just see the two of them like just being a really good fit in terms of how, you know, they they talk about art and they talk about the people that they love and the people that they've lost. V has been very open in the past about losing members of his family and being very close to members of his family and wanting to make them proud. Adam's relationship with his family and with his friends and not wanting to let them down and wanting to be strong for them um, and being so incredibly loyal to them fits V perfectly. Um, Adam is very much um, a Hufflepuff in my view, so it fits them perfectly and the energy from Love to A to Z is very like intense and has a really lot of dark topics that it talks about but in the end is so filled with hope and love and loyalty um, that kind of ticks a lot of Hufflepuff boxes. And last, but certainly not least, is Jungkook. Jungkook is the baby. Um, he is good at <laughs> literally kind of everything that he does and that's something I always think about when I think about Jungkook. It's the fact that he is so good at so many things and it's just kind of like this is who I am and it's it, he's just so funny and he's so sweet and I could not imagine being so good at so many things and doing all of them well. Um, talent? Who? How? <laughs> I, I, it's just something I don't understand. And I had a really hard time picking a book for him as well because like how do you kind of encapsulate the book that I picked to kind of encapsulate all of that is also going to be one you, you have to hold on with me. You have to stay with me here. And that is the, the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I had a really hard time picking a book that kind of encapsulated the thing of putting your mind to something and doing it well. And this book kind of captures that energy in the way that that's complicated and it's messy and it's you want to be loyal to people while doing that um which definitely is so loyal to people and just loves them so deeply and I think that this captures a lot of that energy. This is an epic 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 fantasy about a group of main characters that span continents and span a literal world where they are in war with people. There's a king that's been killed. You have positions from slaves, scholars, knights, a whole bunch of different people, and they're all good at their own thing, and they're unapologetic about that, and people don't try to shame them for that, and people really in the end, at least in this book and what I've read so far in this series, is are just if you're good at the thing, you're good at the thing, and they celebrate that, and they want you to take that steps further, and want you to explore what that means for you. And I think that's kind of the energy that Jungkook has as a person, of being just good at things and wanting to explore them and wanting to learn more and being unapologetic about the things that he's good at um, and it's very unapologetic about being good at things in general and I think that the characters in this kind of have that energy of um, I'm gonna do this thing 
and I'm going to try my hardest to be good at it and you know there are going to be bad things along the way but we're going to do them anyway and I think that's kind of the energy that Jungkook has and tries to put forward especially towards ARMY. I, I just think this fits perfectly even though it might be a stretch to you and this may not be your cup of tea and you may not understand that connection but I think that that energy of being good at things and wanting that to come across and being un unapologetic about them fits this series very well. So that is my list of books inspired by my favorite seven men on this entire earth, BTS, in celebration of Jen's birthday. Again, this is just a video from like my perspective, right? Like your opinion of the BTS members of these books are be totally different. You might think that I'm absolutely crazy for some of these recommendations, but that's that's fine. This is who I see them as. And in celebration of this birthday, I just want you to see what I see from them. Um, and if you don't like BTS, that's fine. If you don't like these books, that's fine. If you don't like who I picked, what I picked book wise for your bias, like I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> this is just how I see them. I love all of these boys so much. I love all these books so much. They just make me so incredibly happy. And I, on Jen's birthday today, I am just so incredibly happy to be a part of ARMY and to be able to be a part of this community. This community is amazing and wonderful and so many things all at once. And I am just happy to be a part of this part of booktube as well and so happy to be a part of this group of people doing videos today. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope to see you soon. Follow me on Twitter if you want to see me be a hot mess 99% of the time and talking about BTS and books. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day and you enjoyed this video. Bye guys.